So after almost six years of trying to keep our stoke alive for Indian food, culture, and music while living in America and completing two years of the Masala vlog, Mel and I hit a number of setbacks while going deeper on new projects, with Mel presenting Indian food at Vegan Night and me starting a new job at the surf shop, we are using the first half of 2023 Masala vlogs to recalibrate our goals for this vlog in particular and come up with a better format. So today we're focusing on food so we can better track our progress in the kitchen. And instead of keeping it open-ended, we're picking four types of Indian foods to hone our skills in 2023 and beyond. The surfing violinist and Deli Mellies are charting a new course today on the Masala Vlog. My first trip to India occurred 21 years ago. I was a naive, well-intentioned 21-year-old who had a lot to learn. As cultured and well-traveled as I fancied myself, having been to Belize, Honduras, and Tanzania, I was none too open-minded about India's food. Even though my dad is from New Orleans and introduced me from a very young age to Cajun food, which is famous for its spicy character, I never really fell in love with anything far from the beaten path of McDonald's double cheeseburgers and Pizza Hut's supreme personal pan pizzas. In India that summer of 2002, virtually the only things that really coaxed my taste buds out of their parochial bias were sweet stuff like rice pudding, street chai, this preparation I filmed of halva, and rural North India's version of a pancake, Malpua. It took me a long time to appreciate all that India had to offer, but the very first revelation of my taste buds to something transcendent in India came in a very simple form, the mango shake. As simple as it gets, really, mangoes, ice, and sugar, perfection. Of course, it doesn't hurt that India's mangoes are legendary, but that simple elixir was one of the first steps in awakening the surfing violinist to all that street food in India and elsewhere could be. When we returned years later, the shake stand or juice corner would become one of my favorite haunts. So starting this year with Melissa's help and her brand new Vitamix, my first goal was to try to convey the simple wonder of those juice corner experiences to Americans and expat Indians here at home in Northwest Florida. When we were in India, Ford got the chance to work with one of the most successful Indian YouTube channels, The Viral Fever. Ford worked with Anand on a couple of TVF videos and he joined Ford in one of our favorite haunts, Haas Cause Village, to give him more info on one of our favorite Indian street food discoveries, the Kati Roll. This simple and timeless Indian version of a street taco was a favorite then and it grew to be a tradition for us and Noble Luke to visit the Kati Roll stand right behind our house near Deshbandu College. And because it's India, even the most carnivorous dishes will usually have a vegetarian option. With Kati rolls, the protein substitute comes in the form of paneer, one of my absolute favorite ingredients in India. We've done a few paneer kati roll experiments thus far, and while Ford and I look to dial in non-veg kati rolls, I want to continue nailing those paneer versions as well. Ford, meanwhile, has made it his personal mission to attempt to master a number of variations of the non-veg kati roll. Because the great thing about street food in India is the subtle and sometimes not so subtle differences in interpretation of a beloved street food item that managed to preserve the character of the dish while adding a spark of creative twist. On his birthday, on February 1st, Ford prepared shrimp kati rolls and they were very well received. Tune in next month for the full story. It's been a couple busy months with some unexpected opportunities, so he hasn't made kati rolls, and I'm ready for him to try again. Yum! Okay, if it's not evident by now, allow me to confess to all of you that I am a sucker for gimmicks. Fads, tacky examples of cultural appropriation, colorful eye-catching variations on the norm. Even if I disapprove in the long run, I have to try it. I have to know. Sometimes these things are terrible. Most of the time they prove to be not really good nor memorable at all, but they serve their purpose, get your attention, and get you to buy one time. Just a nice example of huckster consumerism that I eat up. And after arriving in India and Thailand, we were exposed to a whole new world of gimmicks. It was like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory for the surfing violinist gimmick addiction. Just exotic vegetables and a green Thai curry sauce. Oh, that's what that is. And let's be real, I'm just as guilty of trying to concoct things and mix things together that shouldn't otherwise work, and most of the time my concoctions don't work either. I'm enjoy sandwich, it's a, it's a chocolate chip and jelly. Cookie sandwich. Mmm, and that's awesome. It wasn't. But every now and then you come across something that as an outsider you think doesn't quite make sense. It seems like a gimmicky fad. And then you are humbled when you realize this little thing that I wrote off as too weird or too basic is a timeless and transcendent work 
of culinary art. And of course, India, with all its cross-pollination of cultures within and out of India, the fusion food gimmick is one that always caught my eye. Deshmex, that was the first one that I got to thinking about. Indian meets Mexican. It seems like a natural fit. Some combo of kati roll and street taco would be perfect. When we did our fusion food challenge with Red Moon Bakery, we were both sure we were onto something with some of our East meets West baked goods. They just suffered in execution a touch. As I've mentioned before with the Indian flatbread taco I tried at a local restaurant, sometimes a great idea just comes off as a tacky gimmick. So it will be my goal to navigate these experiments tastefully. I think Ford may have been forgetting one thing when he mentioned one of the first items to awaken his taste buds to the possibilities of India. If I had to guess, while the mango shake no doubt was a big influence during that first summer in Varanasi, I'm guessing cardamom chai was at least as important in his Indian food awakening. The chai stand with all its variations, not just in the recipe and setting, but also in the vessels used to serve the chai has always been a fascination to me. As you can see, I definitely have a taste not just for chai, but for chai cups as well. Hosting chai parties has been one of my favorite things to do since we returned from India. And again, with as busy as things have been since we moved last year, we just haven't had the time to do as many as we would like. And Ford has never mastered chai prep, so I'll be coaching him a bit. And he wants to take that knowledge and see if he can duplicate his favorite versions of chai stalls from Delhi and Noida that made it far too sweet for my taste. So there you have it. Our new course when it comes to Indian food and drink in the masala vlog. Chai stalls and juice corners, kati rolls and fusion foods. As you can tell, we are quite a bit behind into 2023, so the next few months we'll still be playing catch up. In the next masala vlog, Ford will be setting the stage for the future his violin will play in the masala vlog. Until next time, this is Deli Melly reminding you, get back in the kitchen because life is too short to live without masala. To see these videos early without ads, join the lineup here on YouTube. You just need a YouTube account, and for $1.99 a month, you click this little join button and sign up to get early and ad-free access to four monthly vlogs. The Surf Vlog, the Masala Vlog, the Violin Vlog, and the Family Vlog. Thank you very much.